Yeah, welcome to the introduction to scientific Python. This is an extension to the introduction to Python. And in this video, we will focus on NumPy and how to use it. NumPy is one of the core libraries for scientific computing in Python. And it provides a high performance multidimensional array object. So these are tools to work with arrays and they're very similar to MATLAB if you've used this before. Um, just like we looked at simple math in the other video, here we look at simple math with matrices or arrays, I will call them arrays here. So what you can do here and what you see in the first line is to make two float arrays called y and x um, with the values 1, 2, 3, 4 for x and 5, 6, 7, 8 for y. And what you can see in the bottom is that you can add them just like you can add um, numbers. You can do both. You can do x plus y or you can do numpy.addxy. It's up to your taste. But this would be the element wise sum which produces another array. You can also do the element wise difference which will produce another array. So these are the numbers subtracted from each other based on their individual elements. You can do the element wise product and this is expressed as the x star y. You can also use numpy.multiply and you can do the element wise division which will produce an array. So you do x divided by y and numpy divide x, y. You can also do or take the element y square root which will produce an array. So you do numpy dot square root on x and will take the square root on each element in x. Now, a bit more sophisticated is the dot product and that's expressed through the functions dot. You can either do, if you for instance want to take the dot product between the vector v and the matrix or array x, you can do v dot w or you can do numpy dot dot v comma w. And what you can see here is the former mathematical definition of the dot product of a, so a dot b is a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus da 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 till a n b n. Other things that you can take is the sum of all elements. So for instance, if you do numpy.sum on the array x, it will print out the sum. It will print out 10 in this particular case. You can also take the sum across different axes. For instance, just the sum for each column, that would be x is equal to 0, or the sum of each row, which would be x is equals 1. And as you can see, uh, here's what it prints out for the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 that we assigned to x. You can also take the mean, right, the average that I'm going to explain in a bit more detail in the basic statistics video. So here we have uh, an uppercase A uh, array, which is a 3 times 3 matrix. And if you do a dot mean x is equals 1, it takes the mean along that axis, along the columns, or you take it, uh, do you do x is equals 1 and you take it for the different rows. You can also do a dot t to transpose the matrix easily, um, yeah. which you sometimes need for different operations. Here are some basic operations to get to initiate initiate um, arrays that you might need to use. You can do numpy dot zeros, and then you give it a tuple of the dimensionality. So if you do numpy dot zeros bracket bracket two comma two bracket bracket, then you get a two point two array just with zeros, and equivalent to that is numpy dot ones which gives you an array of all ones. You can also 
get a constant array with a certain number with the numpy.full command and you can get an identity matrix with the command numpy.i and then you just tell it one parameter and that is the um, yeah, the uh, dimensionality that you will get. So if you do numpy.i2, you get a 2 times 2 identity matrix. You can get random numbers through the random number generator in numpy. That's access to numpy.random.random and you give it a dimensionality. So here we give it a 2, comma 2, which gives us a 2 times 2 uh, uh, array with numbers, with random numbers between 0 and 1. It's important to learn how to index these different arrays. So how can we get access to individual data points in the array? And I try to color code this here based on column and row. So if you want to get each item in a particular row, then you take the first dimension, for instance, a square brackets zero, that gives you the first row in the matrix. And that's equivalent to writing a square brackets zero comma colon. So colon means all the items in that particular row. You can also, of course, do a square brackets zero zero, which would just give you the number one, which would just give you the first in the row and the first in the column. The other way around, if you want everything in a particular column, uh, like every item in a particular column is color coded here in yellow. So if you want everything in the first column, then you do a colon comma zero or a colon comma two. You can use the ranges that you use from Python. So if you want everything in the first column from the first one onwards you can do a square brackets one colon comma zero and here's another application example of that here we create uh, a rank two array with the shape three comma four and we get the following array that we have in uh, behind, like, yeah, I have the following array starting with one, two, three. And here we can use the slicing operator to pull out the subarray that consists of the first two rows and the columns one and two. So, and that will then be of the shape two, comma, two. So if we do a square brackets colon two, comma, one, colon three square brackets, then we get the subarray two, three, six, seven. So a slice of an array is a view into the same data so that changing something in the slice will modify the original array. So if we print a square bracket 0, 1, then it will print the number 2. If we do b square bracket 0, 0 equals 70, then we will change the same data uh, as we would do, as if we would do this on the on the full array. So all just core by rep reference. Indices are quite powerful in NumPy. So if we have the array a equals np dot array um, with the values that you see here, we can also have a condition on the array and then just get indices that are either zero or false based on the conditions that we gave. So bool underscore index equals round brackets a is larger than two. This will give us a true for all the indices where the value is larger than two, real, true larger than, um, and false for all the other ones. And we can use this then as an index to the array to just look at the positive values. And this again creates a view, it's in memory, it's very fast, there's no data moved, so you should use this. If you only need a subset of the data, you can have a condition and then use that condition as an index. You can also do basic statistics, right? If we have an array like the one on top, 
then we can compute the median, we can compute the mean, and we can compute the standard deviation. So next I'm going to show you how to draw charts. For this we're going to use NumPy in addition to matplotlib. Matplotlib is a plotting library, again very similar to the one in MATLAB. Um, you can use this uh, and for the for the purposes of this example we're going to rename this library so don't, that we don't have to write it all out all the time to plt. So we write import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. In x we assign the lint space ranging from minus 4 to 4 with a thousand points. So lint space gives us values in a certain range linearly separated um, and we give the range here from minus 4 to 4. So we get a thousand points between minus 4 and 4. And what we do for the y is we take the different values and we take them to the power of 2. And then we give that into the plot.plot .plot function. We give it an x value and a y value, which allows that, which allows us to plot a continuous line. Now we want to in this example also indicate the different integers. So these are the full numbers. So we again take a range from minus 4 to 4 to, to 5. Uh, and we again plot the integers uh, on the x-axis and the y-axis to the power of 2. And we add the extra parameter here called rx, which means that we're going to plot them not as a continuous line, but as red axis. And then we use the plot.xlim and we set the limitation of the x-axis. We want our x-axis to go from minus 4.5 to 4.5. We also limit the y-axis to the values from minus 1 to 17. And then we call plot.show. And this is what it shows you. So the first call, the blue line, is based on the x and y arrays that we defined. And the second line is based on the integers and the integers to the power of 2 that we plotted with the extra parameter rx, which made the crosses, which, which turned the line into crosses and which changed the color to red. We can also use plot.savefig, uh, which then allows us to save a figure. So if we would add plot.savefig example.pdf, we will write a PDF that we then can use in our paper. We can also use this to plot histograms. So here we just generate a bunch of random numbers. So we build a vector of 10,000 normal deviates with a variance of 0 0.2 squared and a mean of 2. So our mu is 2 and our sigma is 0 0.5. And we take these random numbers and then we give them in the array. So we just take these random numbers in an array called v. And then we put this v into the function plot.hist for histogram. And we get a normalized histogram of all the different values. We can set the number of bins of the histogram. And we can also decide whether the histogram is normalized to the values from 0 to 1 or the, whether we want the actual values. And here again, we can use plot.show. Let's consider SciPy. SciPy is a library that builds on NumPy and it provides a large number of functions that operate on NumPy arrays and are useful for different types of scientific and engineering applications. And it can, for instance, be useful if you want to work with images. So you can use the functions imread, image read, imsave, image save, and imresize to, for instance, load an image of a cat. And then you have the data, that is grayscale value or RGB values of the image that you read in and the shape. For instance, here we have an RGB image with the dimensionality of 400 pixels times 248 pixels times three for the three different color channels. And we can then just do simple matrix math on this. 
So here we take the vector 1, 0 0.95, 0 0.9, and change the color on the red, on the, on the green and the blue channel, which gives the image a bit of a tint. It changes the colors in the image um, by manipulating two of the color challenges. Not quite an Instagram filter yet, but it just shows you how easy it is to change the different pixel values in an image. You can then resize the image to a different size. So here we resize the image, which originally is 400 times 248 pixels to 300 times 300 pixels. And then we use image save to save the tinted image of the cat. Try it out. The code should be working. You can use it with any kind of image. And this will allow you to, for instance, increase the contrast or to remove um, certain colors, highs or lows from the image. You can also do more advanced math with uh, scikit-learn. For instance, if you want to compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix, you can use the package linalg for linear algebra dot eigen for the eigenvectors. You can also compute the determinant of a particular matrix. So everything that you learned in your math classes so far, you can use and apply with NumPy and SciPy. That's it for scientific Python. This is just an overview. I would highly encourage you to play a bit with the code. All this is runnable code. You just need to do import NumPy as NP and then you're good to go. You also find uh, a tutorial here on the bottom from the Stanford class on neural networks. So revisit the tutorial and learn NumPy so that you're up on speed for more interesting and more complex data science applications.